It is the age of magic. Calamity spreads through the once slumbering wilderness. Foul creatures have been stirred from their depths, and once again man walks these lands. A history long forgotten will be unearthed. Will their stories endure? Entry 1. The Gateways Much has happened these few nights. While I prefer to keep my writings focused on alchemical formulas and arcane tomes, recent events have inspired me to record the changes in our collective culture as we know it. The Gateways have become active again. The greatest achievements by our ancestors, which were little more than monuments, are alive with magical energies again. My colleagues and I have our own speculations as to the reasons behind this, but the general consensus is that the homeworld is free of its former dangers. That is, if one were to ignore the piety of the priests and clerics, who think that one god or another has given this to us as an omen. A reminder of the dangers our ancestors once faced. They would have us dismantle these gateways and adhere to the doctrine of their gods. I find this ill-conceived. Scrolls dating to the time before our ancestors walked through those gateways have given no credit to these zealots. This has caused many debates, most civil, others more violent. Sides are beginning to draw their lines. Many wish to return to the homeworld, to see the sky that our ancestors once looked upon as they bid farewell to the day while others demand the status quo remain intact. I leave this very night to meet with my brethren in the Tower of Zazel. Religion has caused much argument over this subject. Perhaps magic will settle this matter. Verilosa squinted, using her hand to shade her eyes from the rays of the sun that was somehow breaking through the thick canopy of trees and the rays were at just the right angle that the rising sun brought both pain and beauty. The dwindling mist that hung around her ankles, being burnt away, and leaving behind it a morning dew, she took a deep breath in and smiled at the freshness of it all. At first, her elven ears did not even notice the sound of the birds making their morning songs, as if her very arrival in the woods had spurred them into action and she could feel it. Feel the magic of the place surrounding her, enveloping her in the warmth that resonated with her soul. And it was at that very moment, standing there alone in the woodland, that she felt the most connected to her god that she had ever felt all of her lifetime. This was where she was supposed to be. She knew it. Taking those first few steps, felt like she was betraying the beauty that she had moments ago been basking in. Even her light elven footing left behind a trail, disrupting the natural beauty around her. She offered her words up in apology and prayer for her disruption, placing her hand on the nearest tree and feeling its life force flowing through it. Knowing her god was listening was a welcome thought and she continued to feel the essence of the tree flowing through her hand. She became aware of the nest of birds that had made residence in its trunk. Muttering more elvish words, her hand glowed brightly with a pulse. The light entered the tree, giving it nourishment and thanking it for sharing its connection. But it was in that instant, the exchange of energies between herself and the tree, that she felt it. Deep from within the roots of the tree, deeper still, a darkness, an evil unlike any she had felt before. Her life-giving energy reached down to the earth and roused it from its slumber. It had taken notice of her arrival. At once, she withdrew her hand from the trunk of the tree and looked around herself in panic. But within moments, the beauty of the place overwhelmed her brief connection to the once dormant evil, and the connection to her god was once again pure and strong. She knew now that if she wanted this world to remain beautiful, she would have to fight for it 
and make a stand against the waking evil that lay below. Reaching back, she touched the side of her bow in reassurance that it had made the journey with her and then looked around one final time. Her decision made, she would fight. But she would not sit idly by and wait for the evil to arrive. She would seek it out, wherever it may be, and eradicate it from this new world. Captain's Log, Day 32. As I survey the supplies I have left and have gathered, I started to wonder if help would ever come. Stranded here without respite from the horrors, I cling to the hope that my wait will be short or my death quick. I began this journey an optimistic man, but everyone has their breaking point where despair takes hold but they said it was coming soon. Soon, what a cruel word. So little and so much said by such a simple word. Empires have risen and fallen with the word soon. I have come to hate this word as it is my main tormentor. A demon that sits in my brain and scratches out its battle drum hymn. Soon. 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 Daily, I find myself losing more and more hope. Doubt is taking hold of my mind, and I know I must fight on. But the sweet embrace of apathy beckons with a cold, gray finger. If you are reading this, after discovering my dusty bones, Lain forgotten for decades. Remember this. I was a survivor of the original forums. <laughs> <laughs>